This is DG Vision Network. Hello, it's good to be here again. My name is Gideon Tobilaba. And I am Prince Lee Momodu. This is DG Vision Network with Baira Gabi. This is DG Vision Network. On today's edition, we'll be bringing to you a special report on Cyber African Digital Economy Award. Not to forget our guest of the week. For today, we are having Daniel Ezegwe, who's going to talk to us on the newly introduced Beavers by Moda Voters Accreditation System, introduced by INEC. But before all that, let's go see what's been trending in the past week. Zoom Video Communication says it will begin to charge 7.5% value added tax on customers in Nigeria from the 1st of January 2022. Zoom said this in a statement issued on Monday. This follows report from last week that Nigeria will pay the same amount on Facebook ads from the 1st of January 2022. The company said the additional charge is due to the new VAT policy in Nigeria. The company said it will only be collecting VAT for invoices generated on or after the 1st of January 2022. Invoices per this date will not be impacted. Telecommunication service provider Nine Mobile has retreated its support to the nation's Identity Management Commission. The telco gave the assurance at a one-day stakeholder engagement workshop and capacity-building interactive session organized in collaboration with the National Identity Management Commission held in Abuja. The workshop was organized to examine the capabilities and challenges in the NIMSI service delivery process to profile solutions and identify challenges. Delivering his remarks, the Chief Executive Officer of Nine Mobile, Mr. Jordan Pachel, commended the management of NIMSI for supporting the workshop to engage stakeholders in the industry. He said Nine Mobile will continue to play a pivotal role in the country's national identity management enrollment scheme, especially in the rural areas where they have the mandates to register 10 million individuals. After 11 rounds of bidding that lasted 8 hours, Mafab Communications Limited and MTN Nigerian PLC have emerged the two successful winners of the 3.5 GHz Spectrum auction for the deployment of 5G technology to support delivery of broadband services in Nigeria. The two winners emerged in a keenly contested 3.5 GHz Spectrum auction conducted by the Nigerian Communications Commission in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy. The reserve price per lot was initially set at $197.4 million, but was raised repeatedly by the auction manager, reaching $275.9 million at round 11, with Airtel dropping off. The bidding process was then moved to the assignment stage. At the assignment stage, MTN offered $15.9 million and was assigned lot 1, while Mafab offered $11.1 million and was awarded slot 2 at no extra cost. The two winners are expected to pay by February 24, 2022, at the prevailing exchange rate. This is DG Vision Network with Baira Gabi. To stay informed in ICT news, trending issues, business, lifestyle, innovation, and technology, log on to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash DG Vision Network, or you go to our website www.digivisionnetwork.com or better still you follow us on all our social media handles displayed on the screen hello i am bayero agabi welcoming you to this new ride a digital ride that takes you into the lifestyle experience of innovation tech impact and new business frontiers this is dg vision network on a weekly basis we keep you well informed of developments and trends now the tech ecosystem is impacting politics, business, public and private enterprise management, plus how the new digital life can transform your business. I am Bayero Agabi. Join us. Cyber Africa is 10 this year, 2021 makes it 10 years of coverage in the IT space of Cyber Africa, which is a platform on TV, radio, the internet, online, online everywhere. And, uh, 
on print. On print. So this makes it 10 years of coverage in the United States. Yes. And their contribution to technology in this country has been immense. It's very, very massive. Yeah. Kudos so, to the organizers oh, of this people, event people. and the hard work that they have put into this for the past 10 years. 10 years. The consistency is massive, is very, very uh, productive. And the contributions it has also brought to the industry as a whole is very, very encouraging. Yes. So this was why they organized the Cyber African Digital Economy Awards to celebrate people who have played their part and achieved a lot in this space. And the event was <laughs> what 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 a kind grand of success? <laughs> it was a grand success. Yes, it was yes. a beautiful. It was a gala in short. If I yes. put that one. And it was just not about um, people in this uh, ICT industry, yes. but to have entertainers. Yes, spread across all yes. sectors. Uh, the, the high point is the presence of uh, uh, the icon himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, growing up, seeing his name on the TV screen is like, yes. Seeing him live at the event means a lot to me and to every other person that was around for that event. So let's uh, bring to you some highlights and important moments from that event. Enjoy this wonderful, wonderful event. Over the past decade, the development of the fourth industrial revolution, which springs from the technological revolution, has been unrivaled. And the continent of Africa has constantly and devote to catch up with standards and policies to position itself in the new era of economic disruption. Coincidentally, the African continent is home to the world's youngest population, which has largely made us a major and viable market for tech innovation and services. Therefore, I feel very honored to welcome us to this milestone event, which marks the 10th anniversary of one of our legacies and most converged IT digital news platform, Cyber Africa TV, radio, magazine, and online. A very young man, under 16, let me put it that way, <laughs> came up with that idea to say, hey, there is ICT development in the world. Each continent is doing something about it. But guess what? What about Africa? Following 10 years of coverage in the IT space, Africans first magazine and TV platform, Cyber Africa, in collaboration with the Center for Cyber Awareness and Development, organized the Cyber Africa Digital Economy Awards, an event to celebrate and reward stakeholders, regulators, and innovators in the tech ecosystem. The event was gracefully attended by players from the entire sector that make up the information and communications technology ecosystem. NITDA, PFS, Tranta IT, Phase 3 Communications, a few of the several industry representatives that grace the milestone event. We are very, very, very proud of what Cyber Africa has done. Um, Ten years looks like a child's play. But when you think of um, some of the successes that we've recorded in Nigeria's technological ev evolution, you, you, you will be really proud of uh, most of the things that we have done over the last 10 years. Hi, yeah, yeah, it's been a long journey. Uh, 10 years uh, is longer and um, uh, we've seen a growth system and um, they've done uh, very much in repositioning the telecom sector, exposing the opportunities and uh, ensuring that um, um, players um, uh, are being recognized and um, um, opened to the opportunities that are bound and projecting the image of the telecom sector and the benefits are created from it. I think they are doing well. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Dr. Bayero Agabi and his team for what uh, they have been doing for the economy and the Nigeria at large. Uh, well, we've spoken about how we have pioneered the, the campaign for convergence in Nigeria, but I see more of what he had done in raising um, younger hands in the 
media industry. He's been doing so much of that, and we really need to appreciate uh, his trailblazing uh, force in the media. In his welcome address, the president for the Center for Cyber Awareness and Development, the umbrella body for Cyber Africa magazine, radio, online, and TV, Dr. Bayero Agabi, stressed the need for making the move 10 years ago and what to expect in the future. While we are gathered here today is the various segments that make up the digital economy is not for those who code, it's not for those who study computer sciences, it's not for those who understand finances, it's not for those who understand Nollywood or how to create content, but it's a convergence of all of us here seated. So if you check, all the segments are here represented, and that is why we call, we call ourselves digital citizens. You know, uh, care for yourselves, we are all digital citizens. <laughs> Keynote addressed by Larry Ayola, the executive chairman of Tranta IT, was a talking point as he mesmerized attendees with a speech which bordered around Africa's potential in the digital world. Today, in the world, um, technology, and I love the fact that we're not calling it ICT anymore, we're calling it technology, because um, it's, it's beyond ICT. Um, it's, it's, it's no longer um, an electronics thing, it's no longer uh, a wavelength thing, it's more of a mindset, it's more of a science mixed with art, um, it's a lot of creativity, uh, energy, and involves people and machines, and marries the two into this cocktail of something that's wonderful. One of the high points of the event was the presence of veteran Nollywood actor and movie producer Zeb Ejiro, who also shared with the audience how digital invasion has transformed the movie industry while giving a tip on what to expect from movie producers in the near future. We in the entertainment business, we have really, really gone far when it comes to digital. Just the last week, we had a meeting with Netflix, and that meeting was called for some analytics. And uh, <clears throat> we're working so hard how to see to make how to make uh, the digital world our main vehicle. The event ended with the presentation of awards to individual and organizations that have contributed immensely to the growth of digital space in Nigeria. The award categories are cybersecurity, e-governance, startups, innovation, policy, infrastructure, finance, and administration. Um, I believe uh, Cyber Africa has, has been achieving a lot. Uh, with this kind of uh, you know, coming together, it creates awareness. The advocacy is very important so that people can see the level of development, what's going on, understanding the terrain. Um, you know, we've got a lot of positive uh, you know, uh, organizations coming out and growing in, in our economy. And this is something that we need to showcase. And I believe um, Cyber Africa is doing quite a lot in this respect. The advice is keep for them to keep doing what they are doing. Uh, the advice is to keep up with um, the trends in technology and to bring this exposure to more to the polity in whole and also to also accommodate more industry stakeholders um, because the tech ecosystem in Nigeria has a lot of players and because technology evolves the things we see yesterday are different with the things we are seeing today. For instance we are seeing both um, replacing the customer service functions in most organizations. We are seeing different vectors in cyber crime. We are seeing um, if you use your ATM card your data can get stolen. You, you understand if you after if you draw your money. So we are seeing a lot of innovation in technology. Um, that's not also to mention, um, like I said, actually, it's just to make create the sensitization and the awareness to accommodate more industry players. And I believe Nigeria will be on the forefront as well. And the great work that they've done over the last 10 years. South Africa is 10 years, as you said earlier. So have they been been um, impressive? Yes, it has. Um, um, it's, it's been a great working relationship with um, the, 
Cyber Africa team, for us at Galaxy Backbone, they've been part of our story. And I know that we've been part of their story as well. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to um, 10 more years of success, you know, 10 more years of um, greater achievement and um, um, greater work towards the digital transformation of our country and of Africa as a whole, really. This is DigiVision Network. Surprisingly, the operating principle behind most modern electric vehicles predates the internal combustion engine by a number of decades. In 1834, a Dutch professor named Sibrander Stratting of Groningen, Netherlands, built his own small electric vehicle. The catch being, its battery was non-rechargeable. Internal combustion engines work on the principle that fuel and air, when compressed and ignited, cause a tiny explosion. That's the combustion part. This explosive force pushes a piston. That piston's linear motion, in concert with a team of fellow pistons, transforms into rotary motion via a mechanical crankshaft. This, in turn, spins your wheels along the highway. Conversely, the fundamental principle that drives electric cars is magnetism. Everybody knows how opposing poles on a magnet attract and how alike poles repel each other. So let's imagine an experiment using two magnets, one fixed, the other mounted on a nearby rotating shaft. If the two poles nearest to each other on both magnets share the same polarity, say north to north, the magnet on the shaft will be repelled. Because it's attached to a shaft, the shaft will turn. That is until the south pole on the shaft magnet is aligned with the north pole on the fixed magnet, whereupon the shaft will again be still. In our imaginary experiment, we've made the shaft turn a half rotation. All very well, but that won't get us very far on the morning commute. Here's where electromagnetism enters the chat. In a fixed or permanent magnet, like the kind you have on your fridge at home, those magnetic poles are rigid and never change. North is always north, south is always south. On an electromagnet, however, which is essentially a core of metal coiled in electrical wires, this magnetic polarity can be reversed. Imagine one of our experimental magnets is now an electromagnet. If the south pole quickly flips over to north, the fixed magnet will yet again repel the moving magnet, rotating our shaft another half spin. That's a whole spin now. We're slowly getting there. For a basic illustration of how this polarity reversal works, imagine a very simple circuit involving a battery and a light bulb. Electrons flow in one direction from the battery, through the wires, to the light bulb, and back again to the battery. If we remove our battery from the circuit, flip it 180 degrees, then replace it in the circuit, those electrons will still flow around the circuit, just in the opposite direction. Either way, the bulb lights up. Electromagnets, like light bulbs, work whichever direction the electrons are flowing. But rather brilliantly, the polarity of the magnet gets reversed with the flow of electrons. So to keep our magnets in permanent repel mode, we just need to keep reversing the polarity of the magnet. How do we do that? One way would be to keep popping out the battery and flipping it around. But that's a lot of trips to the mechanics with your EV for the sake of a few feet of ground covered. So the real trick to making our magnets spin, which is essentially how electric motors work, is through the so-called inverter. The inverter module on the EV draws direct current from the car battery and, through a clever combination of quick switches, slick circuitry and capacitors, flips the flow of electrons back and forth nearly 60 times a second. Domestic electric motors, like the one you have in your hairdryer, don't require an inverter. Why? Because the current that comes from your wall outlet already flips back and forth. That's why it's named alternating current, or AC. Batteries of any type can only ever produce DC, or direct current. So, spinning magnets, driven by alternating current passing through coils of wire, is essentially what drives electric cars. Electric powertrains have a number of advantages over the internal combustion engine. For starters, the motion produced by the motor is already rotary in nature. Dirty pistons on an ICE require a complicated, breakable crankshaft just in order to turn their linear motion into rotary movement. So, EVs are less likely to fail or require expensive, time-consuming maintenance. Here's another clever thing about that inverter. By adjusting the frequency and amplitude of its newly created AC current, the vehicle's speed and torque can be finely calibrated by its driver. There's no such fine control built into an explosively hot internal combustion engine, which is why expensive and accident-prone additions like gearboxes are a tiresome necessity. Another nifty detail about any EV's powertrain is when the shaft-mounted magnet, or rotor in engineering parlance, is itself spun, it generates electricity. This reversal very handily recharges is the car battery. How can the rotor be turned, you ask? With any hefty source of kinetic energy, like, say, a brake
self-braking automobile, which is handy. This is, to be clear, a very simple overview. There's different types of electric motor and refinements to the design are happening all the time. Not least at one particular Californian car company named for the 19th century genius who discovered the magic of alternating current by himself, Nikola Tesla. What do you think? Will your next vehicle be an EV? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more flipping electrifying tech content. This is AIT Infotech Network, reaching you from a free town in Sierra Leone. Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Johannesburg in South Africa. We are in Cairo in Egypt. Tunis, the Tunisia capital. Reaching you from Dubai. Hanover in Germany. Las Vegas in the United States of America. Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. We are in Beijing, China. In London, England. Thank you for staying with us. This is DigiVision Network. Now the year 2021 has seen so many innovations yes. and uh, we've been reviewing some of this. Uh, we did that for the e-Naira and today we'll be looking at Beavers. Yeah. Uh, I know some people will be watching us and saying, what, what, what is Beavers? <laughs> well, we'll let you know all, all about that. Let's just watch this exciting little informative report on Beavers. The 2021 Anambra State Governatorial Election took place on November 6, 2021, and Nigeria's Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, deployed a new technology called the Bimodal Voters Accreditation System, also known as BEAVERS. Though Anambra was not the first time INEC deployed the BEAVERS, it was first deployed in Isoko South constituency by election in Delta State on the 10th of September 2021, but the Anambra election was the first time it was deployed statewide. The beavers substitute old card readers and can be used for facial scan, thumbprint and barcode authentication. The beavers, according to INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, was initiated to tackle electoral malpractices. While the initiative behind the beavers was a great idea, its utilization during the event has been called to question. But the question remains, was it all bad with the beavers? Now you're well informed on what the beavers is. Now joining us on the studio is someone who was on ground at the Anambra election, and that's journalist Daniel Ezegwe. You're welcome to the show, Daniel. Thank you, thank you, praise woman. Now the Beavers was intended to be an upgrade of the card readers. From what you gathered and witnessed during the election, would you say this was? Yes, um, partially, I would say it was uh, a fair upgrade, um, but um, without removing the Nigerian factor in the whole process. Um, the the, the Bivas are a, is, is, a, is a fantastic innovation, which uh, if we could uh, make the best use of it, do what we are supposed to do, um, we'll get uh, the, the results that, 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 that have been uh, eluding us for, for the past centuries uh, from there. Uh, um, we talk about uh, the card reader. The card reader is like going back to the, to the Stone Age. The Beavers is, 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 quite a, is quite a better upgrade. Uh, we just need some few finishing touches, get what we should get right, uh, get the right people on board, do the right, do the right stuff, and we'll get, start getting the results and everything will, will start looking. There were some complaints about the Beavers during the election. What were the major issues? And in terms of percentage and spread, how much of a concern was this? Um, uh, on the day of the election, there were a lot of complaints, there were a lot of issues. Um, we don't want, don't want to talk about late arrival of materials, that's logistics. Um, we talk about network issues. That was a major issue. The major issue was network problem. Uh, they were having issues connecting, getting, the, getting, getting onto the net, uh, network, and um, it affected the whole process. And I think we should look at the issue of uh, better, better, better link, better partnership with network providers to get this whole stuff done smoothly. Because um, some people were not, some people didn't vote because they were not accredited, and the issue was solely based on network network, and uh, that's that's major issue. Another issue is on um, part of training. Some of the core members that were handling the, the the vaccinations were not even trained. And at some point, we had the issue of a core member. Uh, people had voted, but people were not accredited. Accredited, and the election, the, all the people that were voted, the, the election was cancelled, and they had to start afresh. And the the, the the error was coming from the core member that was handling the machine. So these were some of the issues. 
uh, one of the key objectives of Beavers was to eliminate identity theft and election malpractice. Would you say it succeeded in this front? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, 80%. Um, I, I think, like I told you earlier, the Beavers is a fair upgrade on the uh, card reader. Um, the issue of identity theft was uh, wholly eliminated. Uh, it, was, it wasn't just that the people were there to ensure that uh, what was captured was transmitted to wherever it was transmitted to. And um, uh, the people were very conscious this time, cautious, because the, the, the machine is fairly new. And people were cautious. People wanted to know how it, it was working. And they were everything was explained. And people, people saw that their books counted. People saw everything there. And the observers observed everything. So I think it went a long way to, uh, to eliminating that issue, that old age-long issue of identity theft that we'll be having in the Nigerian election. OK, Daniel, thank you very much. Finally, how would you score the beavers? And what lessons should INEC learn moving forward? Yeah. INEC, INEC has done very well. INEC has, has been, um, despite the crit criticisms, INEC has been one of the backbones of Nigerian uh, um, dem democratic uh, strength. Um, the Beavers has, uh, uh, has, come to, has come to stay. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very fantastic innovation. We need to work on um, the, the training, the, the network, network provision. Uh, I think INEC should next time, I mean, ne next election, uh, we will we, 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 we soon witness the 2023 general election. They should liaise more with network providers, liaise more with more, make, make sure that the, the, the provision of network is encrypted because the, I don't know, but they should make sure that we have fair, 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 fair play in the whole process. Um, the provision of network should be strong and the training should be done very well. And, and um, um, people sh should see, see the whole of the transparency in the whole process. And um, with that, I think with that, we will have a very, very, very credible election, more than what we have, what, what we had in the numbers too. Thank you very much, Daniel, for that eye-opening submission. That was Daniel Izegwe, a journalist from Anambra State, who was on ground during the Anambra election to witness the use of the beavers uh, that was introduced by INEC as a test run yes, yes. for 2023 so, general election. I think it's a good uh, initiative. And uh, moving forward, just just work on the um, the two issues here. Glitches, glitches. That's three percent. It's really a step up from yes. um, the previous. Um, card readers of use. Yes, yes. Uh, when your thumbprint fails you, it's your face shouldn't. <laughs> and if Except your face... you are faceless. <laughs> <laughs> and even if your face fails you somehow, you can see the barcode. You can see your... the barcode from your card. So yeah. whichever way you yeah, will sure. be able to exercise yes. your franchise. Good. So it's a good one from INEC. Kudos to you guys for the great job you're doing. So sad to say, but we have to go. That's where we put a card on shot today. In case you miss anything, just log on to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Vision Network or follow us on all our social media handles displayed on your, on your screen. screen. Until we come your way again next week, my name remains Gideon Tugulova. And I am Prince Lee Momodo. Bye for now.